Hello, welcome back to the channel where my friend and colleague Matt Saunders and I have two cars. What have we got, Matt? Oh, well, we have the new turbo V6 petrol powered Ford Ranger Raptor pickup. Oh, it's exciting. It's quite a thing, isn't it? Yeah. But there is another. We reckon the best off the shelf, most capable 4x4 you can buy, forgive the heavy gunfire we seem to be under, by the way, there's somebody shooting over the way, is the Jeep Wrangler, which is pretty cool. Massive articulation, really incredibly capable in the rough, usually more capable than a pickup truck. But we'll see. We'll take it around some slow stuff, see what they can do, and then we'll test out these new fancy trick dampers. We'll talk about more in the Raptor as well at speed. Stay tuned. Four-door Jeep Wranglers start at 60 grand in the UK and they come with a two-litre turbo petrol engine making 270 horsepower. There are locking front and rear differentials and disconnecting anti-roll bars. And so to the all-important angles, and it's useful to know that these can change considerably depending on what options you spec. But here, the approach angle is 43.9 degrees, the breakover angle 22.5 degrees, and departure angle 37 degrees. The Wrangler has 274 millimeters of ground clearance, a weight depth of 760 mil, and a towing limit of just short of two and a half tons. The Ford Ranger Raptor with a 288 horsepower V6 and locking differentials has fewer options than the Jeep. Its approach angle is worse at 32 and a half degrees, but the breakover angle is largely the same at 24 degrees, although the Jeep is obviously better if you spec it in short two-door form. The Ford's departure angle is worse than the Jeep's, as is usually the way with pickups, at 24 degrees. Its ground clearance of 272 mil and towing limit of 2.5 tonnes are all but the same as the Wrangler's, while its weight depth is terrific at 850 millimetres. So the thing about pickups is they tend to be a bit longer, don't they? And a longer wheelbase and a, and a shallower angle. Did you go through there a minute again? Oh, I can't remember, but it looks like somebody else. It looks like somebody else, but so we're not going to get too stuck. Yeah, they tend to be um, slightly worse, sort of at the off-road yeah. extreme stuff due to their size and wheelbase and, you know... Yeah, and that rear end is tend to be equipped to deal with a tonne of stuff, doesn't it? So they don't have quite such an articulation at the back, but... This wheelbase, the, the, the wheelbase, the low capacity of this is in like 650 kilos now, isn't it, or something like that? Yeah. And it's still got a live axle, but it's got core springs. And core springs, it. yeah, 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 wishbones, I think. Um, no, kind of wishbones, but um, yeah, it's definitely got core springs. It's got wishbones at the front. Um, it looks quite trick when you sort of see all the suspension work yeah. that they've done on it. Um, and it's got those very clever dampers. Very fox dampers. So I was looking the other day, they developed those those live valve dampers for uh, Alaris race buggies. And the clever thing is you, they've got separate valves for compression and rebound, and they can change at any time. So as it goes into full droop with the suspension down, it sort of firms them up to get ready for the lift. But then as it comes back up again, it then stiffens that up so it doesn't, so it doesn't, you know, put, bounce down the road and they change every each one at each corner it's really trick isn't it I, but I don't know if this has got this has got these bypass valves doesn't it but I don't know if it's got separate valve being for compression and rebound not sure mate I don't know whether but effectively it shuffles the, the sort of damping pressure from one end to the other or whether it just sort of has a reserve and, and you know and um, sort of does it sort of in a different way but it definitely um, I mean it's a very effective thing when you kind of not at this kind of speed but when, no. you, when you have a bit of Speed up when which you start will, which get will, thing moving around properly. Yeah, which we'll try in a minute. I think you should try that, mate. Because <laughs> you spent a bit of time before, haven't you? We're going they did, quickly yeah, up in, uh, they, in Spain. In Spain, they did a launch at Le Coum, uh, yeah. and they have a, this sort of Baja style gravel, muddy um, track which you can batter around a bit. Going to make a noise. There it is. Oh! I mean, they're equipped to do it. I mean, it's got an under tray and stuff like that, so it's not like it's. Yeah, that's not, the other thing you realise when you get like when you get underneath it. this, you see how much protection there is. Yeah. I think it it sort of makes you feel better about those little incidences. Of yeah. Oh, well, it wasn't so bad, is it? No, it wasn't bad at all. Because it'll very rarely ground in places that will do much damage to it. You know, yeah. I mean, you have to work pretty hard to get it to ground right over the rear axle or you know right in the middle of that rear axle. Oh, crikey! It is quite a big car, isn't it? It's what five. 0.3 meters long, 
two and a bit metres wide, just over two metres wide, without the mirrors, and about 2.2 with them. Yeah. So it's quite a big car, isn't it? I mean, there are places that a Suzuki Jimny would fit where this will not. Yeah, I mean, it's the size of a big SUV, isn't it? I remember yeah. we felt the same about the new Defender when it came along. It was just, wow, this is wide. There's things, you know, there's lots of green lanes I wouldn't go down in this sort of a sized car, and I suppose the same applies to me here, but, um, you know, the thing is, it's a properly engineered specialist off-roader, and it's got the all-terrain tyres and, and the travel, and, you know, I think we'd have to work very hard to find something that, that the Wrangler would do at this sort of speed, going up slopes and things, and, and climbing and, and descending and traversing. You have to work pretty hard to find something that would do, that this would That this would, will not, yeah, I think that's probably true. It's just those clearance angles and approach angles and things that, you, you know, you, you might ground this a bit more often. Yeah. It's good though, isn't it? And it's got locking, so this, so, I'm in four low, but it's got four high, two high. You can lock the rear diff independently, you can lock the front diff independently. If you buy the diesel Ranger Raptor, yeah. you do not get the dampers and you don't get a locking front diff. Oh, is that, is that right? Yeah. But it's not that much cheaper. Well, that's really the weird. On the diesel. I don't know, it's really strange. They're just not, I suppose the Australians who've developed it don't want, don't want that. This camera is good as well. The, 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 I mean, it's not quite as comprehensive as like the Defender all round cameras. It's pretty good, isn't it? Right, so let's mess about with a few of these drive modes. What do we want, do you think? Sport? R? Well, do you, uh, well, if we're going to go quick, do you want to be in Baja mode? Is that R mode? There is a Baja mode, I'm sure. There's a Baja mode for the exhaust, but I'm not sure it's a Baja drive mode. Could be wrong, though. It's on here. Normal, sport, slippery, mud ruts, sand. Oh, there, it there it is. There it is. You found it. But so that puts us in four high. Okay. Do you want to be in Baja? Yeah. I think if we're going to go quick, because that's what does the, it softens the dampers off, or yeah. soft or whatever. It, it not it soften. Is that? Or it preps the dampers for that. It does soften off. It, it does soften off. But then, funny enough, I so I was with an instructor yesterday who did a couple of laps in it. He might have left the. I think he left the dampers in Baja mode, but he put the car in too high and locked the rear diff. Right. Because. More drifty. <laughs> I hate instructors. <laughs> but it's a bit slippery. It's a bit sort of muddy today, isn't it? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure two is two will drive us deep. So there are a couple of places around here where it might show sort of really nice. what it's all about. Yeah. That is so compliant. Yeah. Well, it isn't. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's being. Doesn't feel like you're being bullied around here. No. 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 Not at all. Yeah, I reckon there is plenty of opportunity to do great damage to this car if you get it wrong. <laughs> Come on. Oh, that was quite steep. I might not go over there very fast. <laughs> How steep is that one? It does, doesn't it? it it's the, got that level of absorption that that is surprising given the size of it and the yeah. weight of it and everything else. It just to watch from the outside to see the you know to see the wheels pop up now. Given they are heavy wheels, aren't they? Yeah, you know, the big big wheels and tyres. Not aware of how hard the chassis is working, yeah. basically, are you? Which is the sort of magic trick. Yeah. And I expect when we do the the same in the Jeep, we'll be rather more aware of how how much work it's doing. But it's one of those cars, isn't it? You could, you know, if, if you weren't so familiar, not that I'm saying I'm, I'm a pro mate, but if you hadn't done any off-roading at all, you yeah. got straight into this and you thought, oh, brilliant, I'll just give it the lot. <laughs> you could quite easily do quite a lot of damage to it. I mean, this is the thing with off-roading, isn't it? Unless, you've, unless you know exactly what's coming, you yeah, can exactly. easily overestimate your speed. Yeah. yeah, they do talk about that a lot, don't they, about getting out and having a look and oh, yeah. doing all that marking. But I reckon if you owned a farm or a patch of land and you wanted to get from one side of it to the other yeah. as quickly as you can. Oh, hooning around fields and things, this would yeah. be brilliant. Somebody phones you up and says, you know what, the cow in the bottom field has got his head stuck through the fence. <laughs> can you get down there sharp? Daisy's in trouble. <laughs> Daisy's in trouble. How are you going to get down there quickest? Is it going to be in the John Deere Gator or whatever they call it? Is it, the, is it John Deere the Gator? The, the, you know, the little side-by-side -side yeah, thing, yeah, you know, the yeah. little UTVs. It's still going to be in one of these, isn't it? You're going to get here much, much, much quicker in one of these. 
Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's not bothered by that. Do you want to try it in the Jeep? Yeah. Oh, old fashioned handbrake. Yeah, well, they're handy off road. They are, actually, aren't they? I suppose they are. It's not just on or off, is it? You can have, a, you know, it's, it's an analog yeah. tool. I'll put it in low ratio. Oh, yeah. Because you may be able to tell. It'll be going very slowly then. Have you, what have you got? No, you've got. In, so, I've, so I've locked the diffs because yes. I wanted to. Front and rear. Front and rear. I've disconnected the sway bars. Oh, can't do that on the Raptor, can you? You can't do that on the Raptor. Is that the underside? Grounding. See? Grounding already. They did it. This is, a lot, I mean, this is a long one. Yeah, and I suppose a, a short one would probably be a little bit was better it? over that stuff. It wasn't the ABS, was it? It wasn't. It wasn't no, I'm fairly sure it was, it was just, actually the underside. Just, just uh, having a little. Grrr. One something hitting the deck. Yeah. So you don't sort of just get a drive mode and stick it in and do it, do you? Which I sort of quite, I quite like. It's so engaging. Mm. You know, it's just like, well, why? If you want to buy an off-roader, hey, that's pretty good. Why do you want to twelve hundred off? Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing about the new Land Rover. You've got, you've got something there. It's some sort of all. That's a hill descent. Oh, there you certainly. go. But it, uh, but I wonder if it's got the thing. Select speed, so I can yeah, so I can change the speed. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a sort of an all surface progress thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a Land Rover's got one as well. Off road cruise control. Like a, yeah, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, and the new Defender has that. It just it just tries to do everything for you know it it removes you from the process. Whereas I always think this is kind of like a hobbyist's car where it puts you yeah. deep 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 into the process of it. But you're doing it very much. Like, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I can't fix the point. It feels more compact, doesn't it? It does, it's narrower, you can tell. Yeah, I mind you, you. I think you know better where the wheels are. Because yeah. You can sort of see the little... I can certainly see the end of the bonnet, and I can actually see our little wings as well, just yeah. about. I'm yeah, your gearbox, you've I don't got... don't need the diffs locked around it, do I? You've got, got a four-wheel really. drive auto mode, and a four-wheel drive part-time mode, and then yeah. a low range. Yeah, and if you want to lock the diffs, I think you have to put it in low range. Yeah. You can... Actually, it might be worth leaving this sway bars off, anti-roll bars off, even when you do your fast bit. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? This will be, all the bells and whistles will be will be available, but only when you're going very slowly in this car. Yeah. It won't be, it won't have that sort of higher speed uh, mode that the, the Ford has. It feels really good at low speed, though. It feels really... Yeah, this is what it's for. Yeah. Oh, God, I really like these. And the doors come off, and the roof comes off. And you know, for all that they, a for all, and everything else that they do off road, the fact that you can do that, yeah, just such a fun weekend wagon. I'd love them to bits. Yeah, well, you could just spend a lot, a lot of time exploring the places you go yeah. and the things you can do with this car. Okay. I mean, the question is, does it feel? I suppose it is. It is. There's a sort of a control about it. Yeah. A low speed control about it that the Ford maybe doesn't have. It feels like it's engineered to go very slowly, pretty much anywhere you can point it. Yeah. Which maybe the you know the Ford doesn't have that same, just rolling kind of inevitability about it. You know, this yeah. is going to get where you want it to go. The capability with which we are looking only at ground <laughs> right now, but it's just like yeah, it's fine. I'll just you know reach down there. Yeah. So what? That is, and it sort of it sort of feels like it's spreading its weight a bit better yeah. at this kind of speed, but yeah, and we have we, you know, it's ground a couple of times, but not like that Ford did. It certainly feels like the approach and departure angles are are greater, mm. and it's just as you say, mate. It just has that, that sort of mountain goat esque ability to put a, yeah. whatever foot has got the most grip down at any one point in time. It's just Mega. Right, do you want to go fast? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, I did say it, mate. It's my fault, sorry. It does great. It, uh, because it's a long one, I reckon it probably does ground almost as much as that Ford, if not. Can't be far off. There can only off. be 100 mil in the oil base, if that, yeah. I would think. What it comes down to is the opportunity that we have to do the things that these cars are designed for. You know, I mean, I can see, I can just see having more opportunities to do this sort of thing in this sort of car than find bloody sand dunes or, you know. To get the most out of the Raptor. To sort of do what the Raptor's supposed to be for, really. Yeah. Certainly in the UK. 
Because you can pay 30, 40 quid for a day to come and play in one of these places. Right. Now, I do not get... Oh, I do get... I do get... Jesus hand. Yeah, of course you do. It was quite a long way away. It was the Fords. It's just a bit more conventional car-like where I can grab it. Bit of heated steering wheel as well, mate. Oh, I love it. Heated. Do you not live on heated steering wheel? Well... No, clearly not. So it depends what you expect. I think it just depends what, what, if you know it's coming. <laughs> is it like... <laughs> is it yeah. like the only thing worse than a cold toilet seat being a warm one? <laughs> <laughs> right, so we just went through that. We, we've got high range mode on. Yeah. We can't lock the diff because you can do that with the, with the low range in, so that's yeah. a bit of a shame, but... And we've got our anti-roll bars disconnected and we've got off-road traction control mode on or something. It feels so to me like I've got a bit more sort of head toss already. Yeah, maybe. It's definitely moving around a little bit more as we go yeah, faster, again. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. not quite as sophisticated over the bumpy bits, is it, mate? It's not quite. It's not bad, but no. it's not quite. No, you're right. It's not quite. Um, it feels I'm, like you're uh, you're taking it slightly beyond its comfort zone. Yeah. And in the fall, you're slightly getting into it yeah, when and, you do it. And it's kind of... Yeah, it's beginning to sort of... Clearly, you can feel the axles beginning to part company with, with the ground yeah. and the, the body's not nearly so well controlled over the top of it all. That's interesting, isn't it? It is. I mean, it still goes as fast as I would really want to. I yeah. I don't really I mean, feel the need to do, you know, the, just go over those. It's not very comfortable, is it? In, in anything, if you're going, you know, if you're, if you're at the top of second gear over bumps like that, I think that's fair. you've either got to be in a real hurry to get to your wounded cat, or, or yeah. you were talking about before, or, you know, very particular tastes in, in motorsport sort of activities, I think. Yeah. Plenty of fun to be had in this car. I think so. So, all right, if, if it's your nearly 60 grand, mm. because they're both 50 plus comfortably, aren't they, you know, by the yeah. time you've done it. Um, you live in the UK. What are you going to go for? You're going to mm. tell me neither, right? No, I've got to have one, haven't I? I mean, let's be fair. I... It's a really hard one. I, the thing is with the pickup, I'd want to feel like I was getting some sort of value out of the pickup factor as well. Yeah. You know, it would need to be an enabler of some sort of hobby or, you know, I'd want to be able to stick something in the back and, you know, maybe that maybe that would swing it, you know. I suppose if you could stick a, if you could stick a, 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 a tent or something or, or, you know, you get more in that Ford you can. and, you go, can. and go and do yeah. more things with it. Maybe that might swing it. And I like, I just like the cut of its jib a bit. Mm. Even if, you know, it's a sort of Bentley 200 mile an hour factor, even if you never do it, it's cool to know that you could. Yeah, it feels a bit, they feel to me like an off-road sports car, like a Ferrari. You know, yeah. you, they, are, they have that real purpose and at it, they are absolutely spellbinding. That's really good up there. Yeah. Well, spellbinding? Spellbinding. Yeah. But if I, you know, there's no doubt that if I was really into my off-roading and I wanted to do proper trailing and stuff, I mean, this is, I think this is a, this is just a cut above yeah. for the really hardcore stuff, isn't it? If it feels like it would get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would climb more. It's lack of weight would help it climb more places. And its manoeuvrability would help it thread more places. Mm. The Raptor's a cool thing, but this is a different sort of appeal to me. Yeah, the character I, of a car. I like the look of these. And, you know, the doors come off, the roof comes off. It's just a, you know, as a lifestyle wagon, I really like. Yeah. I really, really like. I really enjoy them. And they're not, I mean, it's slightly unfair asking to say, you know, which would you have? Because they do a different thing, don't they? I mean, Ford makes a Bronco. Ford makes a Bronco. <laughs> Ford makes a Bronco. To compete with this, really. Yeah. So it's not quite the same thing, is it, really? But I think you were, we were probably going 10 miles an hour faster, maybe more through there in the Ford and feeling half as much, yeah. weren't we? Yeah. That's, you know, that's a pretty, yeah. that's a pretty that big difference. difference isn't it? That is the difference. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. We don't have a specific which would you have conclusion because it isn't a conventional twin test like that. But that is the difference between this car and 
the Raptor and ultimately if you were saying well which is the more superior off-roader well it depends which bit of off-road you are and how fast you're going which is always the case with off-road stuff because there are places a Suzuki Jimny will go that this wouldn't because it wouldn't be narrow enough and there are places that this would go that no other off-roaders would go because that is how they work we have other off-road videos on this channel where we tie out some of those things before we start no, I've just parked. Oh, you just parked. Yeah, thank yeah. you, sir. I, I think uh, it might sort of teeter, but it you can find it. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? You can find them anyway. You can find them elsewhere on this channel. You can find us at autocar.co.uk. You can find the magazine on digital subscription or in print, as it has been every week since 1895. See you next time.